Today's talking primitive doesn't necessarily have to specifically mean primitive archery or primitive hunting for that matter. Um, but basically in, in hunting as a whole. And what I want to talk about in this one uh, has kind of started from a conversation that I have that I had on uh, a Facebook group. As a lot of you may know, a lot of my inspiration for these videos comes from questions that other people have or arguments that have you know started and they don't necessarily understand where you're coming from on something. So, uh, today's uh, little talk has, is a little bit more on the personal side of things to maybe help others understand why we do some of the things that we do. And also to maybe give you an idea of something that you may uh, think is a really good idea to do with your kids later on too. So, anyway, we'll get started and I'll let you know uh, about the whole thing as we go. I have right here a very important book and you can see how old this thing is. I have no idea how old the scrapbook itself itself is, but it's pretty old. Uh, I'll explain a lot about this in a minute, but I want to uh, tell you about the little bit of an argument that was on this Facebook group. Uh, it was about hunters posting pictures of the animals that they shoot. And, of course, anybody that knows me knows I have no problem doing that whatsoever. Now, I, I do believe that they should be tasteful pictures. I'm not saying you can't have any blood in the pictures. But if it's a mess, you know, clean it up or hide it a little bit. Do that kind of thing. Uh, what we want to do is respect the animal. We want to honor the animal that we took. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, you can't honor something by taking a morbid picture of it dead. But you can. And I'm going to explain this uh, so you can understand where we're coming from on this for a lot of people that don't even hunt that may not understand uh, or the folks that um, have never taken a picture of anything they've killed just because they grew up not taking pictures where a lot of us did grow up taking pictures and it's part of our family tradition so anyway you know one of the things that that was brought up was saying that uh, they think that people that take pictures about of their animals are just bragging about the size of the animal or the number of animals that they've killed and the the comment that I love the best was it was like having uh, the guys that have the great big trucks that they're overcompensating for another aspect in their life so basically insinuating that because you take a picture of a deer you killed means you have a little pecker um, which I just think is incredible. I don't know where their research, you know, findings coming up for this thing. But in my opinion, it's probably more or less people saying that type of thing that have never killed anything. And it's more of a jealousy factor that they don't have the pictures to show uh, themselves. But um, I want to explain why I do it and why I have animals mounted in my house, as you can see here. And there's nothing lavish about the animals that I have. I have a couple nice bucks and I have a bear that's a medium size, that kind of thing. But it goes deeper than I'm mounting it for a trophy on the wall. It's a lot more important than that. And I think people need to understand that. Um, we'll kind of go back in, in time a little while, a little ways, before I was even born. And uh, a lot of me growing up um, goes back to when my father was a child and he was hunting and doing things and telling me stories when I was a child. And he used to tell me, because he was a taxidermist, uh, and he fed his family on it for a while um, before he kind of moved on to different things. But even up until the time that he's he died, he was always, you know, involved in taxidermy and doing something, doing competitions. It was about recreating the life of an animal and making it a certain type of, you know, art form. Um, I don't know how well you can actually see the two pieces behind me, but there's a, a bass here that's not overly large. It's a 20-inch bass, but I caught it on a fly rod. And I have a hen shoveler duck right over here that's, you know, somebody would say, well, why do you mount a hen? Uh, it's not overly pretty. But to him, it wasn't about necessarily how beautiful the animal was itself, but what you could do with it. And I know you can't get up close to see the things that he's added to this but little wooden carvings of fish 
in just the artistic flow of the piece itself. Both of these pieces were animals that I had caught and killed, but he mounted and took them to competition and won really um, important prestigious awards on for the artistic ability of, of being able to take a very bland animal and turn it into a, uh, a very artistic piece. And that was a lot of what my dad was about. And he would tell me that when he was just getting started in the taxidermy, that they would drive around the country roads of Pennsylvania and pick up groundhogs that had been hit on the road. You know, they'd have stuff that was stinking and old and he would try and save it just because he wanted to try to mount something. You know, he just wanted to get the specimens so he could practice and get better. He was very interested in it. So as we were growing up, we had deer heads on the wall. We had, I remember sitting in his den, as we called it, just the living room, but um, it was basically a garage that was converted into uh, a living room type setting. Um, <clears throat> he knocked the ceiling out and it was a big cathedral ceiling in just a normal, you know, 20 by 25 garage space type area. And, uh, you know, fully furnished like a regular living room. We called it our den. And it was wall to wall animals that he had mounted, you know, pretty much all of which, you know, we had killed at one time or another. You know, when you, when you hunt a lot, you, you start to mount the things that you shoot rather than picking stuff off the road. But that doesn't necessarily mean we didn't do that either because, um, you know, I remember having a bobcat for a very long time in the house that he had mounted, that he had just found on the road. Um, but anyway, so the idea behind that is, is we had animals all over the walls and it wasn't because we wanted people to come over and say, you know, we're bragging about this deer head that's on the wall. It was just about the recreation of it ourselves. But not only that, but what this really stems back to, especially with me, and why this strikes a chord in me so much, is I remember sitting on the couch many evenings and uh, basically pointing at animals he had on the wall, or he had a whole wall dedicated to just little horn mounts of spikes and stuff. And I have a lot of them in this room actually too. I have hog's teeth and spikes and little bucks on little plaques that I put together because when I, when I shoot something, I want to honor it and I want to remember it. And it's about the memory to me because as I was saying, I'd sit on this, on the couch and I would point at an animal and, uh, and I would say, I want to hear the story about that. And he would tell me everything that he could remember about um, the day that he shot that and it wasn't even you know that we were in the woods and you could hear it coming and we shot it you know the actual shooting of it wasn't the important part but he told me about other things that happened that day that didn't even pertain to hunting uh, he grew up on a farm you know and would talk about uh, them shooting a deer that him and his brother sat on the hillside watching the watching down into the bottom as his father pushed out uh, the creek bottom and the uh, spike came out with a broken horn and he shot it and the day needed to get it home and get it taken care of that was their meat that they needed to shoot um, but they also needed to go home and uh, cut corn and cut firewood and all kinds of different things and, and it just went into a lot of deep personal story um, situations that were really important to me as a child and we did this on a lot of occasions. You know, there was times he would tell these stories over and over, but he had dozens of things to point at and say, I want to hear the story about that. And oftentimes, when you'd ask a different day, it would go into a different story, maybe something that happened the day before or something that happened the same week. Uh, and I find myself doing that with my own child as well. Um, I like to tell the story of how I was on the quest to kill a deer with a stone point. And before I had done any of that and had been trying so hard and it was such a difficult task um, and my wife was heavy into her very deep into her pregnancy with our child and <clears throat> I asked her I said I you know do you want me to stay home and tend to you I can quit hunting season a little bit early and I just and she says no you're so you know you've worked so hard to try to get a deer killed with a stone point and you've come so far you need to continue 
because this baby's not coming until you do. And the very next morning, I shot a little eight point with a stone point and killed it. And that evening, she went into labor and had our child. And it's that kind of memory that sticks with you. And that's why it's important to remember the animals. And the reason that I say that, too, is because I have good friends of mine, two in particular, that never took pictures growing up of anything that they had shot. And they have antlers hanging out in the garage or in the workshop, and they don't even know what they're to anymore. You know, they don't even remember the deer. And, uh, and I'm, of course, I don't blast them for that. They didn't gr grow up doing it like I did. It was a different situation. But when we shot something in our family, it was a sacred moment that we took the animal's life and it was a, a, a time to be sad that we killed the animal, but it also fed our family. And that was really important, especially to go out and do it ourselves. And those people that say, well, you don't have to go out and shoot animals to, to feed your family. Either way, if you're eating meat, which we do, and I'm going to, no matter what, an animal is dying, whether you do it yourself or not. And I feel, feel it a lot more of a, a spiritual connection or an appreciation for the animal that I do it myself on an animal that is wild and free range living as opposed to something that was in a pen just waiting to be slaughtered. So that's a different subject altogether. But what I'm saying is I remember every single deer <clears throat> that I've killed and every single pig that I've killed. Um, I have not forgotten any of them. And a lot of reasons for that is I have pictures of every one. Now, of course, I've saved antlers and we have deer heads mounted and that kind of thing. And I have small bucks mounted too, you know, just stuff that my dad wanted to mount. Um, so it wasn't about the trophy aspect because we have pictures of ducks and fish and uh, does that I've shot, that kind of thing. And it's not like we're just taking these pictures. And I know that a lot of this does get started by the folks that go to a game ranch and they shoot a big giant buck and then they get these professional pictures taken where they're holding it out way out in front of them like this so the antlers are huge and then their faces in the middle and they're like look at this massive deer that I killed or a hog that they've propped up on a log in front and they're sitting way back you know so the hog looks like it's the size of a sofa you know and that they're like the size of a two-year-old child that kind of thing and I know that 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 gets a bad name and I can appreciate people wanting to dig on folks like that because that is, that's the look what I shot, look how big it is type of idea too. But, you know, to some people that's that's important to them. You know, maybe they don't have a lot to be proud of in their life and they are proud of that. So you shouldn't down them for it. Um, but anyway, everything that, that I've killed, I've never tried to make look bigger either. I have a picture of a deer that I shot. Like if I shoot a small deer, I'm just as proud of it, especially if I shoot it with a bow and arrow and stone point that I made myself from natural materials. You can damn sure bet that I am proud of that, despite what anybody says. And anybody that has ever actually done that knows that it's not as easy as making a bow and an arrow and then going out and shooting something. It is way more difficult than that. So I have a picture of a of a deer in which I'm holding it up like a uh, rabbit or small game you know it's about a 50 pound uh, yearling doe and I'm holding it up by the back legs like this because uh, basically to show I'm not afraid to shoot a small animal because we, we eat these things this is what it's for and that is an absolutely delicious deer do I feel bad about taking its life I do I honestly do there's times after I shoot an animal saying I really don't know especially since having my child and, and your your opinions start to change on life a little bit. Um, but there's times I'll shoot an animal and, and say, I don't, you know, I'm feeling really bad about shooting this animal and, and that I took its life. Um, and then when you get it home and, it, and it's cut up and it's in, in the freezer and you're pulling the packets of meat out and you're eating it and, and we don't waste it by any means. We don't give it away. We eat it ourselves. It's very, very important to us. Um, then that's when you get that appreciation for why we do it. And uh, as far as, you know, and the taking the pictures and everything goes, it, it's important to me to honor that animal because it did. It gave its life. And I know it's cliche to say it. Uh, people get tired of hearing it. But that animal gave its life to feed you. And you should be willing to honor it. And by doing a tasteful picture so you can remember that memory, 
uh, is a good way of doing that. Now, when we get back to this book that I have right here, uh, I go back to, to sitting on the couch and talking with my father about the animals, uh, the experiences that he had with the different animals that are on the wall. And um, that was one of my cherished memories uh, that I have with him. I grew up hunting with him. We did a lot of things. I mean, I have a lot of great memories with my father, but that's one of those things that not everybody has that. And, uh, and I really appreciate having that. And I also really appreciate having this. And what this is, this is a picture book of pretty much every single deer that he has killed in his life with a story written about every one of them. And somebody would say, oh, look at all these hero photos. You know, he's taken, he's bragging about all these that he shot. Well, let me tell you something about bragging about a deer that you've shot. My father <clears throat> told me growing up when we would go hunting that when we shot something, we didn't just continue to shoot things. We shot for the meat, and when we got enough, it didn't matter if deer season was still in. If we got enough deer, we were done hunting. Um, and I really appreciate that. We don't kill just to kill. There's people out there that kill 10 deer a year because they can. And I know everybody's opinions are different on that. I don't personally agree with it, but it's none of my business what other people do. But <clears throat> my dad has had killed... Um, I'd have to count him in here, but I think he's, I think he's got 53 or 54 deer that he killed in his life. And folks would say, well, that's not very many for your entire life. Um, averaging one a year since he was born. Of course, you know, you didn't, in Pennsylvania, you weren't allowed to start till you were 12. And there was also years that he moved down here that he didn't kill any at all. And then there was other years he'd kill two or three. And as his later years, uh, caught up with him, you know, you get past middle age, your, your drive to hunt seems to settle down quite a bit. So he averaged about one a year. Um, but that's what we needed to live. And also keep in mind, that's combined with when I started hunting and adding my deer into the freezer as well. So what we end up, you know, with is we don't have um, a pictures of 400 deer that we killed because like I said it, it is a, it, it was a sacred thing to us so when we killed one it was important or we killed two a year we fill the freezer and we were done and uh, and so that's why we don't have these great numbers so people that say that we're bragging about the numbers of deer we kill it's not about that at all and we're not bragging about the size of the deer we killed either if you look at any of these pictures there is not a single one of a trophy buck in here. Yeah, he killed a few nice bucks in his life, but not very many. It was not important to him. It was important that we got the meat. Um, and I look at this, just a random one that I opened up to, and it's a picture of about a 53-pound deer. It was either 53 or 54, because I shot one as well the same weekend. And he wrote, this deer was shot in Alabama on the same day Ryan got his first deer. Shot at 317 yards. This is my longest shot to date. It was a button buck and was taken at, with the 6mm at 10am in 1991. And I look at this picture and it brings back so many important things in my life. Because I know that I was there. I took the picture. Um, and he's holding a gun that uh, he has, of course, passed down to me now that he has died, and I own the gun and I cherish it. Um, I also look at this. I didn't even realize it at the time, because uh, this is fun. The fun thing about going back and looking at pictures, if you look at this picture right here, if you can see the, the old World War II style, Fred Bear style uh, camouflage pants that he was wearing, I still own those pants, and I... Uh, they no longer fit him when he got bigger, and he gave them to me, and I continued to hunt in them as I was growing up, and I still own the pants. I just don't want to get rid of them. They're, they're pretty beat up at this point and worn through, but it's one of those things that he passed down to me, and I've just saved it. And I have pictures of him wearing it on days that he killed deer, and that's why this type of thing is very important to me. So 
now you can understand how important this is to me because uh, now that my father is gone, I would give anything to be able to sit on the couch and hear one of his stories again, and I never will. But I can open up this book, and I don't sit down and read it all the time. It's one of those fun things that I can bring out, you know, once a year, once every six months, you know, just kind of whenever, you know, you want to. And I'll, I'll read a few pages about things. And a lot of these hunts I was here for, and I can remember the times that I spent with him. And then there's other times before I was born in the back. I mean, in this picture here, I'm seven years old. Uh, we rolled back to here, 1985, when he shot uh, a little tiny spike in Florida with his bow. Um, and I was two years old, so obviously I wasn't there at the time. But um, I remember seeing this picture growing up, and it's funny, he's actually wearing the same pants again in this, in this uh, he obviously wore them a lot, because there's a few pictures in here. <laughs> so anyway, now you can understand, it's not about bragging about the animals that we kill, and it's not about saying, look how many we've killed. Um, I, I'd have to sit and count again um, through to be sure to get my number exactly, but I'm 31 years old and I've got about that same average where I've killed 30 or 31 deer in my life so far. And people say, man, that's not very many deer, you know, but we're not out slaughtering them either. We shoot them for the meat and everything. And what I have here, what my dad started for me was a book of me shooting animals and it started with a chipmunk and a groundhog in Pennsylvania and then moving on I killed my first deer at eight years old, my first pig at seven years old, my first pig with a bow, a compound bow at that, because you know you're a kid, you can't really pull back enough weight. I killed that at ten years old. And just a little something about it. And it rolls all the way through until you get to my later years where I took it over and I write stories along with it with all these pictures. And as you can tell, there's not a trophy buck in this and I'm not holding antlers out to make it look extra large um, in fact I'm not even dressed in camo this is the point that I reached in my life where I turned into a primitive hunter or a traditional hunter and wear plaids or solid colors and that kind of thing and hunted with a bow and that's what the majority of, of all these pictures are nowadays but the most important thing to me is having that book that I can look through of my dad's now that he's gone is my son at four years old already sits down and looks at this and he asks me questions about what happened on this hunt the same day or this 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 in the same situations that I used to ask my dad and he'll see a picture of something like if my dad shot something on a hunt that I was on I put a picture of it in my book as well and he'd say well who shot who shot that bobcat is that my grandpa Donnie that he never got to meet but now he knows who his grandpa is uh, even though he never got to meet him. And I'm able to share his stories with him and pass this along. So for somebody to say that you're overcompensating for something in your life or um, or bragging about the animals that you've killed, then I challenge you to go hunting, take your kids, take pictures of everything that you kill, not just the big trophy animals. I have pictures of trout that I caught, a beaver that I trapped, um, a couple pigs, you know, ducks, um, coons, all kinds of stuff in here, a rabbit that I shot, and these are all memories. And that is the important part. It has nothing to do with the size of my pecker. Absolutely nothing at all. It's all about family and memories and honoring these animals that I now am able to remember each and every one that has ever given its life so I could have a memory and a meal. So I challenge you to start doing this. Even if you haven't done it yet, start taking pictures of everything to pass along to your children because when you're gone and they can't hear your stories anymore, it's going to be really important to them like it is to me.